glad to see him on today. Tell him you love him. Tell him you love him. Tell him you love him. We're glad to see you on tonight. Amen. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. One more time. You could have been anywhere, but you're in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We praise God. Praise God for your presence. We thank you so much for joining us. For those of you who are watching us online, we thank you so much. Let's get the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's get the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. Amen. Amen. We serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God who's uh, great and mighty to be praised, great and mighty to be praised. And uh, it was good to be able to make it to another Bible study. Uh, we also want to let's clap our hands for our online audience. Amen. For, for joining with us tonight. Or maybe uh, if you're just catching this later, if you're catching this later, don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, if you're watching us by way of YouTube, become a subscriber uh, so that way you can catch, stay in the loop, catch the videos that come out on a day-to-day -day basis uh, for encouragement because we all need encouragement. We all need encouragement. Sunday is not enough. Sunday is not enough. I wish it was, but Sunday is not enough. Um, you need the Lord in your life, and it's right around this midweek time. You need to hear a word. That's why you come to Bible study. That's why you tune in uh, to a Bible study um, throughout the week because Sunday is not enough. Sunday is not enough. And uh, we've been talking about something that is not talked about in a lot of churches. And uh, the Lord uh, put it on my heart to talk about evangelism, evangelism, evangelism. Um, that's what ministry is about. It's about evangelizing. And if we're not evangelizing, we're not accomplishing the mission that God has for us. If our fourth graders are not evangelizing, if our fifth graders are not evangelizing, if our, our, our teens are not evangelizing, we're going to lose a world with our, with, with, for Christ. We're going to lose a world. And that's why it's so crucial. It is crucial if you're a grandparent that you need to be teaching your grandkids how to witness. If you're a grandparent, I'm hoping that you've taught your daughter or son how to witness, but maybe you, you became a Christian later in life. You ought to be teaching your children and teaching your grandchildren and teaching all those around you how to evangelize, the importance of evangelism. My prayer as we move into 2024 is that Impact Church will be an evangelistic church like never before. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. That's, 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 that's what we're about. We're about, we got to go out and reach souls. That's, that's, that's what this ministry is about, going outside to reach souls, going outside of the four walls of the church. You're coming tonight or you're watching tonight to get the knowledge, to get the, uh, what God wants you to know about evangelism, but don't keep it a secret. Uh, some people say that evangelism or the gospel is the world's best kept secret. It's the world's best kept secret. The thing that can change someone's life around, we keep it to ourselves. We keep it to ourselves out of fear. Out of fear of what people are going to say. Uh, out of fear of being liked. Well, you're telling me are you worried about being liked and someone can die and go to hell and you're not going to say anything about it? 
if someone was, if, if a four-year-old boy, if Faye was running into the uh, street out there on South Goddard Road and you saw a car coming, how many of you would just run out there and try to save her from coming? Yeah. Why? Because you care about her. You love her that much. And that's what we are to be, that's what God has called us to do. And so last week we, we talked about who is an evangelist and who is an evangelist. The preacher, the pastor, the ministers, the deacons, everybody, everybody, repeat after me, point to yourself and say, I am, I am. an evangelist. Amen. You're an evangelist. You are in, you're an evangelist. And we talked about, um, raise your hand if you don't have an outline, don't have an outline, okay, all right, so we, we have a few people uh, it's the same outline from last last week. It's a continuation. So if you wasn't here last week and you or if you need an outline, just raise your hand. One of our oh, we don't, okay. All right. So I think we have them online. We have them online. Okay. Or you could follow along with us. Just uh, write in your notes or whatever. Um. But we talked about every believer is called to be a light. We talked about every believer is called to be a light. We talked about every believer is called to be the salt of the earth, the salt of the earth. Every believer is called to be a witness. Every believer is called to be a witness. Every believer is called to be a minister of reconciliation. Every, every believer is called to be a minister of reconciliation. Every believer is called to be a, an ambassador of Christ. Do y'all remember these things that I gave y'all last week? You got them? Okay. All right. All right. Every believer is called to be an ambassador of Christ. An ambassador. Anybody remember what an ambassador is? It's a what? A representative. Uh, uh, so we're, we are ambassadors of Christ. When we go on our jobs, guess what? We ought to be representing who? Not Beyonce. Not Cardi B, not little baby, but who? Christ. Christ. We represent Christ when we are going to and fro. All right, and then we are to be a vehicle of God's power, his supernatural power. We are to be a vehicle of God's supernatural power. God wants to do some amazing things, and watch this. He wants to use you. Say that with me. God wants to use me. To accomplish great and mighty things. He wants to use you. He wants to use you. You are to be a vehicle, a vehicle of God's supernatural power. And then we talked about you ought to be a sower and a waterer of seed. You ought to be a sower and a waterer of seed. In other words, what I mean by that is that you may sow the gospel Somebody else may water it, but guess who's going to get the increase? God. God. So that means when you, when you talk to someone um, and you just plant, you're planting the gospel in them. You're telling them, man, Jesus loves you. Say, Pastor, I don't know the gospel. Tell them this. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. He rose again for you. And watch this. They may say, you know what, I don't understand that. But then... Two years later, or maybe three months later, somebody else may come around and tell them the same thing. God loves you. He died for you. And then that time, they may say, you know what? It's clicking in my head. All you got to worry about is just planting or watering, and God is going to get the increase. God is going to get the increase. And then we talked about, the last thing we talked about was every believer ought to be a fisher of men, a fisher of men, a fisher of people. Now, how many, how, now, any testimonies of how someone came to share their faith this week and they led someone to Jesus? We, we have a mic to go around the room. Uh, you, can, you can speak at this moment real quickly. How many people right now, you've had an opportunity, you heard, the, you heard the message last Wednesday, and you put it to practice. You put it to practice. You put it to practice. All right, so I, I, I got no one. <laughs> All right, so guess what I got to do? We got I got to teach it again. See, we see a lot of times we think this thing is just we're just coming to church, just getting knowledge. 
And we 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 but the Satan he he doesn't mind if we just keep coming to get knowledge and not doing anything with it. Amen. That's where the amen goes. He doesn't mind. He says, you know what? Uh, yeah, come and listen to the message. Come and listen. But guess what? You don't do anything about it. He's still winning. He's having victory over people's lives. So today I want to talk about how can I be an evangelist? How can I be an evangelist? Or what can I do? What can I do to, to help this process of what we call evangelism. Here's the first thing you can do. Um, and if you agree with me, type in the comments box. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs up. Here's the first thing you can do. I can pray. I can pray. I can pray. If you believe that, if you agree with that, uh, that number one, type it in the comments box, thumbs up, or I agree. What can you do in order to win someone to Jesus? You can pray. You can pray. And we got to graduate from now I lay me uh, down to sleep, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. We got to graduate from those types of prayers as to now, Lord, I need for you to save Susan on my job. God, I need you to, uh, I need you to save Shaniqua on my job. Pray. Look at 1 Timothy 2. It's on your outline. It says this. It says, therefore, I exhort, I exhort, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. That's, that's what Paul, he's teaching that the, you, you ought to be a person of prayer. He says, who are we to pray for? For kings and all who lead or who are in authority. That means we're to pray for our presidents, even though we don't like them. We're to pray for them. We're to pray for our governors, even though we may not agree with them. We're to pray for our mayors, even though we may not agree for them. We ought to be praying for our teachers. Of, I'm, I'm praying that you all are praying for your teachers, for your child's teachers. That, Lord, man, I, I pray a covering over their lives. I pray that, God, you will pour into my son's teacher, God. Help them to minister. Help them to minister to all the kids and to reach all the kids. God, I pray for my pastor. God, I pray that he will be able to pour into all types of people. We ought to be praying. And if maybe if we start praying more, we'll start seeing more power. It says, therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all people, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life. Somebody say quiet and peaceful. That means as a Christian, you ought to not be in mess all the time. Y'all see that? You should lead a quiet in, 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 in peaceable life in all what? Godliness and reverence. Here's the verse I want to get to. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved. He didn't say that all people are going to make it to heaven. Y'all see that? He's not teaching universalism. But there is a God's heart, God's desire is that every single person that's watching online, every single person that's in person, every single person in this world get saved. He wants people in China saved. He wants people in Buckhead saved. He wants uh, uh, T.I. And, and King and, 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 and all, he wants everybody saved. He doesn't show any partiality. He wants everyone saved. He, wants, he, he desires all men to be saved and to what? Come to the knowledge of the truth. Y'all see that? So here's what you ought to pray for. You can pray for a heart of love and compassion. You know, um, compassion leads to action. We can say all day, you know what, I, I, I care for this person over here. 
you know, we can say all types of things, like I want I want people saved, but if we really care for them, we, God, God wants us to have a compassion. He wants us to have a compassion, compassion for the lost. He wants us to have a compassion for, for, uh, for lost people. Pray for doors to open. Pray for doors to open. Put that on your prayer list. Like, Lord, open up a door for me tomorrow. As I go into this store, help me to, be, help me to reach someone for Jesus. As you are doing your Christmas shopping, ask the Lord, Lord, help me, lead me to someone where I can share my faith. Lead me to someone who I can share my faith. All right, so Colossians 3. Let me show you Colossians 3. And pray for us, too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Now, Paul's in chains. He's praying. He says, pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Y'all see that on your outline? You see it? Paul's in prison, and he's, man, if anything, Paul's saying, Lord, get me out. Of, most of us be praying, Lord, get me out of prison. <laughs> get me out of this situation. Paul's praying, God, I pray, use this as an opportunity to get the gospel out. That's what he says, the gospel, the gospel. Somebody say the gospel. All right, so number one, you can pray. You can pray. Um, you can pray. Mark this down, for eyes to see opportunities in front of me. For eyes to see the opportunities in front of me. For the eyes to see the opportunities in front of me. There are, there are opportunities right in front of you. And many of us, we passed them up this week. Last week, we, we passed them up. But you know what? You can't beat yourself up about last week. We know that you, you heard the message last week, and y'all didn't do nothing with it. But guess what you could do this week? You can do something with it. <laughs> you can do something with it. I'm not. All right. Uh, but I'm just, I'm just messing with y'all. But look at John chapter 4, verse 35. It says this, do you not say, do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes. And look at the fields. Somebody, somebody thank God for your eyes. 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 Let's praise God for mother on here tonight. Amen. She had a, uh, her eyes had literally shut yesterday. And so she's here tonight. Praise God for her um, even coming to church. And, 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 and so, but that's a blessing to be able to see. Because yesterday she couldn't see. And God gives you eyes to see people. God gives you eyes to see people who don't know Jesus. That's why you have the eyes. To see people who don't know Jesus. It says, and then next one, for boldness to speak when the opportunity comes. Pray for boldness to speak when the opportunity comes. How many of you get scared sometimes when the opportunity comes? All right. I see the hands roll up. Yeah. Why, why do you get scared, Ariana? What happens? When, why do you get scared? I put you on blast. <laughs> why do you get scared? All right. Somebody, somebody want to say what? Shout out loud. Why do you get scared? Fear of what? Re failure. There we go. Rejection. That's it. That's human. That's a human. That's a human tendency. We get Fear of being rejected. But most, what's a, what's a remedy for that? The fear of rejection, the fear of, uh, uh, or the fear of failure. What's the remedy? Yeah, evangelism. So if someone has the fear of rejection, someone has the fear of failure, what would you say? What would you say? In a quick one word, two words. Holy Spirit. Pray and ask God. There you go. Holy Spirit. Yeah, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit 
the Bible says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. We, we know fear is a human tendency. The disciples were fear in, the, in, the, in that boat ride when they were on the Sea of Galilee. They were fearful. Jesus says, it, it is I. It is me. I am who I am. Fear not. When you have Jesus, you don't have to fear. But when you do, you go to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm fearful. Lord, you got to, you, you, I need you to use me right now. And God, watch what God will do. Watch what God will do when you do that. So pray for boldness. Already start praying for boldness. Now, notice he's, notice I'm not saying pray for my house. <laughs> Praying for my job. <laughs> See, most of our prayers are, nothing's wrong with that, but most of our prayers are so are, are shallow. God wants us to take the focus off of ourselves and put it on others. Maybe if you start taking the focus off yourselves, maybe God would just start moving in your life and answering your prayers or your wants. You remember the Bible says if you delight yourself in him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. But the thing is, many people forget the first clause, if you delight yourself in him. When you begin to delight yourself in Jesus, you really can care less about a big screen TV. It's just a big screen TV. But my main focus is that, man, I want to see people know Jesus. I want what he wants. Boldness. Pray for boldness. Pray for boldness. Look at Acts 4.29. Look at it on your outline. It says, this, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness that they may speak your word. You see, they were threatening people. And they, he says, by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And watch what happens uh, uh, when they prayed. The place where they were assembled together was what? Shaking. If we begin to pray, Dr. Coley, God can begin to shake some things up in our lives. You going through financial ruts? Pray. Lord, I need you to shake some stuff up. Going through relationship ruts. Lord, I need you to, I need you to, I'm praying because I want you to shake some stuff up. And what was, what happened? And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Moses, watch it. And they what? Spoke the word of God with boldness. It happened when they were filled with the Spirit. Are you following me? They were filled with the Spirit and they began to speak the word of God with boldness. Boldness, boldness. All right, so next, pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. In my witness, pray for wisdom. In my witness, pray for wisdom. In my witness, wisdom. When when you think of the word wisdom, what comes to your mind? Wisdom, wisdom. Older people, okay, <laughs> yes. Experience, that's good. Experience. When you think of wisdom, it's experience. Um, when the church was growing and it was growing numerically and the elders, the apostles had said that we got we to appoint other people who can do this job. So they appointed deacons in the church, uh, seven men. And one was, one qualification of deacons was they had to be full of the spirit and full of wisdom. Why, is what you have, why must you be wise? Because every situation may cause for a different response. You got to use your wisdom through the word. That's why it's so crucial that you don't, don't listen to counsel if it's not coming from the word of God. There's a lot of Instagram preachers that ain't coming from the word of God. And so how do you, how do you measure what the, the TikTok preacher, the YouTube preacher, any preacher, any person says? You measure it with the word of God. 
Because God's not going to contradict his word. I don't care what you feel. So pray for wisdom, 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 wisdom. Pray for wisdom. The church of the, church of the living God today needs more than anything wisdom, wisdom. Colossians 4, 5, it says this, live wisely among those who are not Christians. Live wisely and make the most of every opportunity. So, in other words, you, 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 you getting a ride with someone to work, and they listening to Lil Baby. And you get in the car, and you like, you got your oil in the car, and you trying to anoint what they playing and saying, I can't listen to anything secular. Is that being wise? <laughs> what do you do? When someone is playing worldly music, you get in their car and they playing worldly music with a whole bunch of profanity in it. What do you do? You sit there and listen to it. <laughs> it's their car. <laughs> you listen to it in their car. So you got to pray for, hold, hold your question, pray for Wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. That's being wise. The Bible says, he who wants to win souls is wise. You got to be wise. You got to be wise in winning souls. Live wisely among those who are not Christians and make the most of our opportunity. Now, the Holy Spirit tell you, go ahead, Moss. Go ahead. You got a question? Do you have a statement? Go ahead. Okay. So, yeah, don't, don't read too much into it. The point I'm saying is that we are to be wise. That applies in many different ways to many different people. Right, right. What, what? The, the point the point that we're saying is that you to be wise in everything you do as a Christian. Being wise in this particular context may be something different in another context. That's kind of like, that's what I'm saying. The, the scriptures say live wisely among those who are not Christian. Everything that you do, you got to make, you ought to be wise about it. Let your conversation be gracious and effective. Let your conversation, whatever you say, be what? Gracious, even when you're directing something to the pastor, it should be done gracious and effective so that you will have the what? Right answer for everyone. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a time to respectfully disagree. But even if you're respectfully disagreeing, you still got to be what? Gracious and wise and knowing when to say what to say. I'm not going to go on live TV and say what I got to say. That's not being what? Come on, y'all. I'm, 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 <laughs> that's not being wise. It's a way that you come at your mother. It's, you can disagree with your mother, but it's a way you come at her. It's a, you, can, you can disagree with your leader, but it's a way you come at your leader. The Bible says do everything decently and in order. Because if you don't have order, then that's chaos. And I know I'm in, in the Bible. Like I said, you don't have to agree, but there is a way. So for wisdom and witness. Then watch this for creativity in my witness. 1 Corinthians 9.22, look at what he says. I become all things to all men. 
that I may save some. So, in other words, Paul says, to the Jew, I became a Jew. To those without the law, I become without the law. Why? Because my purpose is to win. If your purpose is to win people to Jesus, you got to do what you got to do by all means to win them. That's the point I'm making. So, in other words, in order for me to win young people to Jesus, what must I do? I got to go to young people. I got to speak their language. Their language is different from someone who's 70. If I'm going to reach someone who's 70, I need to reach them. I need to understand their language. Am I making sense? If I know that Shauna likes football, if, if I'm going to try to reach her, guess what? I may carry on a conversation about football. If I watch, if I see the, the sisters on the job, they are listening, they, they watch Married to Medicine, that may be a gateway for me to squeeze in Jesus <laughs> by knowing something about it. I, may, I listen to certain music so that I know what young people, what, what other people listen to. So if y'all hear me in my car, with certain artists playing, don't judge me. I mean, come on now. I'm, I'm just, now. All of us are in a different faith walk, and you don't know why I do what I do. You can't make a judgment call when you only read page four of the book, and it's 100 pages in it. The difference now, I can listen to certain stuff and it don't affect me than when I was 12 or 14. Grew up in a church and you can listen to, you can look at movies. You can go to the club. You can, uh, you can, um, what's some other things you can do? You can, Wear certain clothes, certain colors. Uh, you can go to the movies. It was something. Oh, the music. Jury. You can wear jury. You can listen to certain music. And so, even to this day, I struggle. Why? Because these are some things that were taught at a young age. And I think the, the issue was sometimes things were not taught clearly. It was not taught clearly. We were just th thinking if, if, it, if it wasn't anything to do with Jesus, it was sin. <laughs> football was a sin. I've heard people talk about football as a sin. Why? Because the, you, you're basically, it's a contact sport. You're hurting each other. <laughs> I heard boxing. I've heard a lot of crazy things. You, you shouldn't listen to boxing because you're you are, you are trying to punch someone with the intent of hurting them. <laughs> heard of a lot of crazy things. And we can debate, we can argue, and we can do all these types of things. But the point I'm trying to make is that I become all things to all men <laughs> that I may. What's the purpose? What's the end goal of all of this stuff that we're trying to do? We're trying to reach people. Say it again. Yeah, it says, might, might all means save some, because some people, you know, as we know, the Bible teaches that some are going to come to Jesus some will hear you, and watch this. Some will say they may cuss you out. Some going to accept it. Some will re reject it, and some may say not right now. But here it is. For pray for wisdom, my witness. Pray for creativity, my witness. Now here it is, uh, Moss. Check this one out. Check this one out, Moss. For sensitivity. To the Holy Spirit. For sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. For sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. For sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Romans 8.14. Romans 8.14. And it says this. Romans 8.14. 
it says, for all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You ought to be praying for sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. Now, hear me closely. Wake up. A lot of people blame a lot of stuff on the Holy Spirit. Did y'all hear me? Wake up. This is what I want you to understand. When people say the Holy Spirit told me, just be on the lookout. 1 John 4 says this, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits. And then in the Bible, y'all, yeah, my, we're my Bible readers. It's in the Bible, 1 John 4, 1. Mark that down and go back and look at it. 1 John 4, 1 says, my beloved, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, don't believe every spirit, but test the spirits. How do you test the spirit? Study the word. The word. That's how you test it. Someone come in here and tell you it's God's will for you to name it, give me something, y'all. Give me something. It's God's will for you to leave your wife. Y'all see what I'm talking about? You know, we can come up with a whole lot of things in our own mind, in our own heart. And let's just be real. Before we even move further, let's acknowledge that our hearts are wicked. Can we all acknowledge that? Our hearts are deceitful, Jeremiah says. Our hearts are very deceitful. And so don't always follow your heart. Sometimes your heart will lead you to a wrong joker. Because <laughs> one thing about a man is he can talk a good game <laughs> to get what he want. All right, y'all ain't ready for that. Y'all ain't ready for that. Y'all ain't ready for that. All right, number two. I can live the, write this down, I can live the Christian life openly. I got to hurry up. I can live the Christian life openly. I can live the Christian life openly. Everybody is coming out. I mean, on all kind of commercials, we see everyone is coming out. LeBron James is, has a lot of <laughs> basketball uh, commercials, but everybody is coming out, right? Christians, we got to come out. We need Christians in the government. We need Christians in the school. We need Christians in, in every single area of our, of our lives. We need Christian police officers. We need Christian doctors. We need Christian lawyers. I can love, number three, I can love people and meet needs. Write that down. I can love people and meet needs. I can love people and meet needs. Number uh, four, I can be led and directed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you can be led and be directed by the Holy Spirit. I can be led and directed by the Holy Spirit. Number five, I can learn how to share the gospel in a nutshell. I can learn how to share the gospel in a nutshell. And number six, I can be ready to give an answer for my faith. I can be ready to give an answer for my faith. How many of you feel confident to be able to give an answer for the hope that's in you? All right. How many of you, you still, you, you just, you don't, you, you, you feel like you don't know enough Bible? Anybody? Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. All right. That's what we need. Look at what 1 Peter 3.15 says. Um, my mom said something to me very, um, she said something, I think, I can't remember, maybe last week or this week. She said, she says, I need to be in Bible study. My mother is over, you mind if I tell you age? Over 70 years of age. And she says that she needs to be in Bible study every, 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 every week. Now, how in the world, some of us, we 25, 45, 50, and we say, I don't need Bible study. 
Look at what 1 Peter 3.15 says. But in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared. Always. That means you be studied up, prayed up, Sister Sabrina. Be prepared to give an answer to who? Everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with what? Y'all see that word? Do this with what? Not harshness. Not like you think you know it all. But do it with gentleness. That's the key. Do it with gentleness and what? Respect. All right, so always be ready to give an answer to everyone who asks. They're going to ask you, Thomas, why do you come to church every Wednesday, Sunday? Why do you serve the way you do? What would you tell them? Okay, to gain knowledge, wisdom from God. Why, 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 why do you pray? Why, do, why do you pray the way you do? Build a relationship with God. There ought to be something, brother Jay. Why, why you come? Why you, why you lead the youth ministry out of all the ministries, man? Why, why you go take time out of your busy schedule to, 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 to lead? Sharpens me. Be ready, because people are going to ask you. Solomon, Jaden, Faye, why you come to church every single week? And your kid, and other kids in your, in, your, in your class, man, they, don't, they probably don't even care. Why you come? You got to be able to know why I come. Number seven, I can invite people to church. 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 You can invite people to church. You can invite people to church. We got to use the Andrew principle. Um, one of the two, verse, John, verse 40 says, one of the two who heard John speak and follow him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his what? Own brother. His own brother. So that's the first principle. When you get saved, Find the person that's closest to you. I often say this. Oftentimes, some of us we're we're sometimes we sleep in the bed with someone that's that needs Jesus. Find the find. Stop trying to win the the masses when you got to take care of home. My wife don't mind me helping out the homeless or the poor, but. I better make sure I take care of home first. That's my responsibility to take care of home. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated to Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. That's, man, if we could do that, man, we, we, we're going to be on fire. Let's close this year out with the Andrew principle. I got to get on the phone. I got I to gotta send them a, 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 a DM uh, on social media. I got I to gotta do something to get them to Jesus. And maybe you're not well-versed in, in knowing what to say and how to say, which if you keep coming here, you will be. But maybe just if you're not there yet, just tell them, hey, I want to invite you to church. I want you, I want you to come to church Sunday. What to wear. Wear what, whatever, whatever you want to wear. Just come as you are. As long as you got clothes on, come as you are. <laughs> come as you are. All right, I can invite people. All right, so question is, where am I an evangelist? Where? Real quickly, where are you an evangelist? Everywhere. Name places. Home, job, grocery store, church. You say church. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sporting event, bar. Who said bar? My man. <laughs> At the bar, online, Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Chick-fil-A, that's the Christian spot right there. <laughs> that's the Christian restaurant. But, yeah, you got yeah Chick-fil-A. At the gym. I mean, it's a whole lot of places. 
that you can go to 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 reach people for Jesus at restaurants. One of the ways you can reach people at a restaurant um, when your waiter comes to bring your food uh, or when the waiter takes your order, you can say, hey, um, you know, I would like chicken fried rice, et cetera, and a a glass of water, uh, no lemon. And you say, hey, by the way, um, we like to pray over our food. If there's anything that I can pray for you, about, if, that if, if there's anything going on in your life that I can pray for you about, and most of them are like, oh, wow. They start, sometimes they start crying. And you, you, you just, that may be it. They may just tell you their life story. They may tell you, I need you to pray for my kids. Or I'm praying that I get out of this business. I need a new job. And then you just, as they leave off, you, you pray for them as you're saying your blessing. You all do say blessing over your food, right, before you eat. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you are already praying anyway while you're there. Pray over their food. I mean, pray over their whatever they ask you to pray about. Pray over their situation and watch what God will begin to do. And then always have a um, always have a flyer. Always have a flyer. Where are your flyers? Where are your flyers? Where are your flyers? Thomas, where are your flyers? That's how you witness. How can I follow you? You can follow the church at what? Yeah. You give them the handle. Impactcommunity.atl. Everybody said it. Impactcommunity.atl. Yeah. Pay it forward cards. Where where are our pay it forward cards? Do we have our uh, pay it forward cards? Uh, They're somewhere. We have our pay it forward cards. And so we're going to have some of those available for you to pay it out. So uh, pay it forward means that you you go to like Starbucks and you pay someone for for else some pay for someone else's drink. And then the next person they do it, et cetera. It's so many ways to reach people. Get out of your house. Go walking. You're killing two birds with one stone by simply walking is good for your heart. It's good for your stress levels. And it's also good to because you're meeting people. You're meeting people. In other words, you wherever you go, wherever you go, when am I when am I an evangelist? All right, that's the key. When am I when do you become an evangelist? You said it. The day you get saved, let's give her a hand clap. Let's give her, let's give her, uh, oh, she just read it. She read it. Oh, no, she didn't read it. Okay. All right. Put the next one up. Look at the next one up. Here it is. You, let's say it together. One, two, three. You do not have to wait until you go through special training. You don't have to wait, Izzy, before you go through special training. No, no. One thing I like about kids is you can go witness to your teachers. They ain't going to put you out of school for talking about Jesus. (laughs) Man, we need some bold young people. Go up to your teacher and say, uh, Miss McKenzie, have you repented of your sins? (laughs) Hey, tell him, uh, Miss McKenzie, Jesus loves you. That's better, you see. Y'all like that? Yeah, y'all like that? (laughs) That's mother said, that's wisdom. There you go. I was just checking to see if y'all were listening. But that's good. That's how you put the, the message together. You put everything that you learned, and now, all right, what do I do with all of this? I've heard the teachings on Wednesday. I've heard the teaching. Now, God, what do you want me to do with this? God doesn't have you here just for you to just hear, but he wants you to do something with it. You don't have to go through special training to become an evangelist. Training is good, 
But sometimes God wants to use you while you don't even have no training. So here it is, at every level. Here it is, when am I an evangelist? Until you feel you are ready? No. Until you have your life completely in order? No. Until you thoroughly know the Bible? No. Until you feel you are ready? No. At every level, you can bear witness of what you have seen and heard. You are an evangelist. Somebody say, now. You're an evangelist now. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You're an evangelist now. You are an evangelist now. You don't have to wait till next Sunday. Because the truth of the matter is, somebody's going to die before the end of the year. Somebody's going to die before the end of the week. And you and I, we never know when it's someone's last day. How many of you know people who died suddenly? They didn't have a chance. My grandfather, he had a chance. All my grandfathers had a chance. My grandmother, she died suddenly on the spot. I got a chance to witness her die on the spot. My dad was performing CPR on her. She was having a heart attack, and turns out she died. Everybody's not going to have a deaf experience where they can get a chance to, you know, uh, make final preparations. Some people go just like that. And some people, they, they may, you may be knowing that they're going to pass within a year or so. But the truth of the matter is none of us know the day or the hour when our time is up or when someone else's time is up. And that's why we got to get so committed. <clears throat> I remember growing up. Man, we hear messages about that church, about evangelism. And it's like today, we're not hearing that. So as a church, we can't get lax on what the most important thing is about church. And that's evangelism and making disciples. And man, any questions, any questions, any questions, any questions, any questions. <clears throat> now, this is the time to ask your questions. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Give her a mic, please. A mic. That's good. Amen. Praise God. Let's give her a hand clap for that word. Amen. So basically what she was saying, Jesus, he told us, told his disciples in the gospel, shake the dust off your feet. If people, people are going to reject your message. Uh, but I think the problem in our culture today, we want to be light. Preachers want to be light. Let's be real. Pastors want to be light. Think about social media. People want to be light. Look at social media. You're checking your like, you're checking your, your Instagram every hour. Why? Because you want to see how many people like your page, like your stuff. We're in a like-driven, a viewer-driven culture. How many views you got? Why? Because we want to be liked. But living for Jesus, you got to run the risk of not being liked. Everybody not going to like you. If you're trying to be liked by everybody, you ain't pleasing God. Amen. Any other questions? Any other questions? Comments? Comments? Yes, sir. <laughs> Give me a mic. Say that a little. I said if. Yeah. I said anything wrong. Right, right, right. In reference to what you is doing, mm -hmm. I would like to apologize for everybody. Mm -hmm. Two. Um, when you had asked me the question and my brother said the Holy Spirit, let me share this. I was walking in the parking lot to go to Kroger and the Holy Spirit said, stop and pray with this guy. I kept on walking. Mm -hmm. And the one word that I have in reference to the fear is to be overcome with the desire to do this. Mm -hmm. You see, so 
I understand everything about the delight, but if there's no desire, as far as I'm speaking of myself, mm -hmm. then there's no, the spirit can't move through me to evangelize. Mm -hmm. And you share some scriptures, and one <laughs> scripture also in Acts is that those people, they had the desire. Yeah. Not only being filled, but they had the desire to. Yeah. Go out. And who puts that desire in you? The it's God. It's God. 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 Yeah, it's, it's, it's there. Yeah. But we, we have to, as as Paul said, seek to stir up that gift. So That's I right. have to stir up that desire. Right. To to overcome the fear. Right. That's you right. See, so, so I got you. I, believe me, I, like I said, I apologize for anybody, but that was not my intent. Right, right, right. In reference to disrespecting or sounding disrespectful or lacking in wisdom. But because of what I'm asking God to do, and then when he gives it to me and I don't do it, then it's, 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 it's kind of it's, it's hurting on mm -hmm. me because I know the limit. And, and I know what I'm asking. And right. And now that, like I said, now that we're in a question mode, now I have time to explain. What you said is not all the way wrong, per se. It, that's a case-by-case -case scenario uh, about getting in someone's car. It depends on the relationship that you have with that person. And that's, that goes, that's, that's, I, I, at preaching, that's, I'm not, that's not the focus of what I'm trying to say. The point I'm just saying, the point I was trying to make is that we're to use wisdom and, we, you know, we're to respect, um, I'm not, I'm not trying to impose my beliefs on someone else, but, and, but, but for somebody else, uh, that I know personally, I may, I may, you know, joking around that I may be able to get away with that. So I think that's a case by case scenario. Cause now that you say that, I may say, Hey man, you know, do you mind turning this down? You know, something that's depends on, that's a case by case scenario and it, it works different for everybody else. Depends on your relationship with whoever. Yes, sir. Is it, wait, you wait for the mic. Real quick, I just wanted to apologize. Um, earlier when you asked, did we put in the work from last week? Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to apologize as a leader that uh, I wasn't bold into answering you right then and there. Yeah. Because I actually did. Put oh, in praise the, the Lord. I just didn't get the results, so I've just been saying it. Oh, well, but praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> Give him a hand clap. Amen. That's, it don't matter. You, your job is not to get the results. You keep talking. Yeah, you, you, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I, I was just going to say, um, my uh, brother, uh, best friend, cousin, whatever you want to call it, he graduated mm -hmm. this morning. Oh, wow. From uh, Georgia State. He got oh. his master's. Okay. And uh, we had went to uh, get something to eat afterwards, him and a couple of his aunts, his mother and whatnot. And uh, she was, you know, they were asking me, you know, what I've been up to or whatnot. And, uh, you know, of course, I told them about the church or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, of course, they said they want to visit because they live in the area. Oh, well, great. So great. Um, I did invite them tonight, you know, and I did let them know what we do, what we're doing mm -hmm. here. It's just, I, I, I didn't get the results, so that's why. Right, right. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, the, hey, our job, let me, let me clarify. Our job is, is not to worry about the results. That's God's job. That's like, my job tonight is to deliver the word. I can't come to your house and make you do anything. And that's not my that's not my goal. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a I'm not that leader who's gonna drive up to your driveway and make you do what <laughs> what the I'm not I, I don't think that's that's not what we're trying to do. But uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I got you. Yeah, I got you. I got you, man. Thank you so much for that. But uh, uh, yeah, I just want to uh, pick it back off of that, man. And this is just a lesson for all leaders and everyone. Man, teaching you, teaching children, teaching men, women. Your job is to be present, be faithful, be dedicated, uh, be committed. You can't make anybody do nothing. I can't make anyone believe the way I want them to believe or do what I want them to do to a certain extent. But the same way it works out in the world, we're, we're, in, a, we're in a warfare with Satan. And his enemies, his 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 angels or his uh, demons, I should say, we're in a we're in a spiritual warfare, and they don't want they want to stay in the kingdom of darkness. God wants to bring you into the kingdom of light. 
So it's a, it's a constant war. The war, watch this, y'all, is not even between you and your neighbor. I teach this all the time. It's not between you and your spouse. Y'all know that? The issue that you have is not between a person. It's between a spirit. It's a spirit that tries to come in and bring division, discord, and guess what? He'll use anybody he can to cause that. That's why as believers, we ought to be what? What, what? what should we be doing mostly? Praying. Church should be about prayer. If we spend more time praying, we can say, God, man, what is it for you to have us to do? God, what it, who do you want us to go to? Where do you want us to be? So, anyways, any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? All right. If all hearts are clear, well, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Praise God. Um, just a few announcements. Uh, uh, let's, let's, as we close out this year, let us try to give. Let us try to give. Um, uh, our right tithe. Let us try to give our right tithe as we close out. We know that uh, we're 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 um, closing out. With, I mean, three more weeks left, I believe. Is it two or three? Three more weeks. Three more weeks, and we're it's the seventeenth, the twenty fourth, and the thirty first. And we're we're closing out the year. We're closing out the year. So let's finish the year strong. Let's remember to give. Um, this is the season of giving. People may want to donate to your church. Uh, let them know how would you get someone to donate to the church. You you could tell them they can download the app Easy Tide. They can download. They can go to the website. They can give. Uh, you'd be surprised. Some people may want to give an offering. They may not even go to. They're not able to physically go to a church, but they want to connect with a church that's doing things, and they may want to pour into a church. So please don't be afraid to talk. Please don't be afraid. We believe that God is going to work everything out. Um. Um, and and so forth. So let's 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 try to step it up a notch in our giving as we close out the year. Can we do that? Can we do that? All right. At this time, we're gonna um, get ready to give. You can give by way of Easy Tive, Easy Tive. Download the app Easy Tive. You can text to give uh, for your online viewers. Text to give uh, 404-390-0000. Uh, um, man, what's the number? What's that? 390 2287. Yeah. 404 390 2287. You can also mail in your offerings in to the following address on the screen. Um, and then you can, for those of you giving in person, you can give up here at the front. Uh, but we have a few announcements. Uh, no Bible study next Wednesday. And the Wednesday after that, we normally close Bible study for the next, the last two weeks of the year. Last two weeks of the year. Uh, so this be our last Bible study of the year, our last Bible study of the year. And we will come back strong the first of the year. So we'll meet every Sunday. We'll still be meeting every Sunday. We're going to be meeting um, on Christmas Eve. Um, so before you go shopping, before you go shopping, just stop at the church. Stop, stop. Worship God first. And then you have plenty of time to go shopping, plenty of time to go shopping Hopefully, you get your shopping done before Christmas Eve. Um, but I know my wife, they, they don't get out of school until that Friday, which is crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. I think Rockdale doesn't get out until next week. So um, I think maybe some other counties. Um, and then we have service December the 31st at 10 o'clock a.m. 10 o'clock a.m. So if all hearts are clear, let us get ready to give. And my wife, she's going to come with a few announcements. Let's give her a hand clap as she comes. Good evening. Uh, just one announcement from FIA, our young adult ministry. They will be having a Christmas pizza dinner on December 16th from 5 to 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, right here.
Tell them you're glad to see them tonight. 